Here's an interesting fact about the 1960 Washington Quarter. While it's relatively common to find this issue in mint state from old rolls and bags, finding top-notch examples is a rarity. Despite many survivors being struck with retired proof dies, the type B reverse, their faintly proof-like surfaces couldn't protect them from the rough handling they underwent at the mint and beyond. During the peak of the modern coin market from 1959 to 1964, countless BU bags circulated among dealers and investors. Unfortunately, few sought out high-quality pieces until decades later, often missing out on the opportunity. This specimen exemplifies the scarcity of such pristine examples. It was sold for $1,560, underscoring the enduring appeal of numismatic treasures like this one. The 1953 S. Jefferson Nickel graded mint state 66 full steps by PCGS represents a true strike and condition rarity among Jefferson Nickels. It features a satiny, silky smooth premium gem surface dusted with iridescent champagne gold toning. The detail is truly impressive, with sharp to full design elements both at the borders and in the centers. The 1953 S is even more challenging to collect in the finest grades than the 1953 D. Not only does it have a much lower mintage, but it is also a more poorly produced issue overall, with the vast majority of mint state coins lacking full steps definition. This FS gem ultimately sold for $21,600. Introducing a remarkable find, the 1927 Lincoln cent in mint state, 68 red. According to NGC, while this issue is readily available in fully red gem condition, the population drops rapidly above the grade of MS 66 RD. While some coins may exhibit less than full strikes, this is not a major concern with the 1927 P cent, and collectors should aim for nothing less than a sharp impression. This elusive specimen found its way into the hands of a lucky collector, fetching an impressive $84,000, presenting the 1942 D. Washington Quarter in Mint State 68. Surprisingly, the Denver Mint struck a number of quarter dollars comparable to the production of 1941, despite the rapid buildup of, of America's economy during this time. It's possible that the agricultural sector, a significant component of the, of the Denver Mint service territory, was not as greatly affected by the production increase typical of both coasts. 1942D quarters were notably well-made compared to those from the other two mints, a trend often seen during the war years. Gems are plentiful, with even a fairly large number of MS-67 examples available to advanced collectors. This superb gem recently sold for $4,226.40, representing a prized addition to any numismatic collection. The 1932 D. Washington Quarter, graded Mint State 66 by PCGS, is one of the two key dates in the series. With a mintage of 436,800 coins, it has the second lowest mintage in the series. In 1932, collecting quarters was not as popular as collecting other coin types like cents, nickels, and dimes, which were inexpensive and avidly collected from circulation by the general public. Numismatic demand for quarters developed significantly after World War II, and most survivors were culled from circulation by 1960. Today, the 1932D is scarce in lower mint state grades, but not truly rare. However, it is considered the prime condition rarity of the series, in gem or better condition, and is even rarer than the lower mintage 1932S at that grade level. The present coin was the first example certified in MS66 by any grading service. The surfaces are exceptionally clean and free from the abrasions that typically plague this issue. The reverse is mostly brilliant, with hints of olive copper at the lower rim, while the obverse tells a different story altogether. It sold for $74,400. Introducing the 1927 Lincoln Cent in Mint State 65 Red. While this issue is readily available in fully red gem condition, the population drops rapidly above the grade of MS 66 RD. Despite some coins possibly having less than full strikes, this isn't a major concern with the 1927 P cent, and collectors should aim for nothing less than a sharp impression. It's worth noting a minor double die obverse variety for this date. Although not especially distinctive, the scarcity of such varieties for this decade has made it a desirable addition to collections. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating insights into the world of numismatics. 
Thanks for watching and happy collecting.